Hello everyone, it's Bible story time with Aunt Miriam and our Bible story today is entitled The Animals Moved In. It is the 120th year since Noah started to build the ark. The great ship is finished, 60 feet high and 600 feet long. It was become a landmark visible for miles in every direction. Everybody knows about it. Although all have become so used to it, they don't even bother to go near it anymore. They only point at it with a smile and say, Noah's Holy, the vast ship itself looks gaunt and deserted, for only Noah remains with it and his family. All the hired workmen have left they just worked for their pay, and now the job over. They have gone home. They never really believed Noah's message. The great door of the ark stands open, as if inviting everybody to enter and find safety. But nobody comes. There is a strange silence everywhere, broken only by the sound of echoing feet as Noah and his sons walk through the empty vessel, making sure that all is firm and strong and watertight. For 120 years, the old patriarch has preached of coming destruction, but now nowhere is so peaceful as here around the ark. Not even the sound of a saw or a hammer can be heard. Could it be that Noah has made a mistake? Could he have misunderstood what God said to him? Perhaps nothing will happen after all. Perhaps he has wasted his time and money. Perhaps the ark will just rot away where it stands. But look, something is happening. See, those animals over there, they seem to be walking toward the ark. They are and now others are coming from all directions. What can it mean? Now people are running to watch the amazing sight as animals of every kind evidently guided by some invisible thing make their way to the ark, climb up the ramp, and in through the open door. Great elephants are lumbering up the creaking tenders followed by growing tigers grunting bears and bleating sheep. Behind them are zebras, antelopes, kangaroos, pandas, donkeys, goats, and a host of others, while squirrels, possums, beavers, chipmunks, and all sorts of little creatures go scurrying along in between. What a sight! Nothing like it ever happened before. Yet even now, the people who are looking on in an astonishment do not understand. They think it is all very funny. Noah, they say, has decided to turn this ark into a zoo, seeing he couldn't get it float. But as the last of the animals passes through the door, Noah comes to the side of the ark and makes a final plea to the people to follow them in. There is going to be a great flood, he cries. The whole world is about to be destroyed. That is why the animals have come. They understand. Come, come, before it is forever too late. But still no one responds. Again, they laugh at him. Go live with your animals, they sneer as they return to their homes and their sins. Now God speaks to Noah again. Come thou and all thy house into the ark, he says. For thee have I seen righteous before me in this generation. For yet seven days, and I will cause it to rain upon the earth, forty days and forty nights. And every living substance that I have made will I destroy from off the face of the earth. There is nothing more to be done. The people have had their chance. They have been given their warning, but they don't care. Blinded by sin, 
self-satisfied and set in their evil ways. They don't even want to be saved. Their ears were deaf in God's message. So Noah leaves them, the Bible says, and Noah went in and his sons and his wife and his son's wives with him into the ark because of the waters of the flood of clean beasts and of beasts that are not clean and of fowls and every thing that creepeth upon the earth there went in two and two unto Noah into the ark the male and the female as God had commanded Noah and the Lord shut him in as the great door closes silently and mysteriously shut by an unseen hand Noah catches one last glimpse of the beautiful world outside the world he will never see again